Julius Robert Oppenheimer, often called the father of the atomic bomb, is a figure shrouded in both brilliance and controversy. However, his influence extends far beyond the Manhattan Project and into the very foundations of modern physics. The Oscar-winning movie about Oppenheimer tells us about his life and the Manhattan Project, but today's video will take you through his contributions to the quantum mechanics. Hello and welcome back to QuantumFi. In today's video, we'll see how Oppenheimer brought quantum mechanics to the US. So let's get started. The Early Life of Oppenheimer J. Robert Oppenheimer was born into a wealthy family in New York City in 1904. His early education took place at the Ethical Culture Society School, an institution known for its progressive ideals and emphasis on social justice. Oppenheimer excelled across a range of subjects, displaying a particular aptitude for science, mathematics, and languages. At the remarkably young age of 18, Oppenheimer entered Harvard University, initially intending to study chemistry. However, he soon found his true calling in physics. His professors and peers quickly recognized his extraordinary intellect. It's worth noting that during this time at Harvard, Oppenheimer experienced a period of emotional turmoil and depression. This led to a concerning incident where he reportedly attempted to poison one of his tutors. The exact details of the incident and its motivations remain unclear. Despite these challenges, he graduated from Harvard with summa cum laude in just three years. For those who don't know, summa cum laude means the highest distinction in Latin. Following Harvard, Oppenheimer continued his studies at the prestigious University of Cambridge in England. There, he worked in J.J. Thompson's Cavendish Laboratory, a leading center of physics research at the time. Although his experimental work wasn't his strongest suit, Oppenheimer made significant theoretical contributions, including the now famous Born-Oppenheimer approximation used in quantum molecular calculations. We'll talk about this later in detail. In 1927, he completed his doctorate at the University of Göttingen in Germany. Working under celebrated physicist Max Born, Oppenheimer further honed his understanding of the emerging field of quantum mechanics. His brilliance was evident. Oppenheimer's early life was marked by exceptional academic achievement and a deep curiosity that would later shape his scientific legacy educational years at university. Oppenheimer's time with Max Born at the University of Göttingen was a transformative period in his development as a physicist. Born was an exceptional mentor for the young Oppenheimer. Here's how their collaboration shaped Oppenheimer's understanding of quantum mechanics. The Born-Oppenheimer approximation. One of Oppenheimer's most significant contributions during his time with Born was the development of the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. This mathematical approach simplifies the complex calculations involved in describing the behavior of molecules by separating the motion of fast-moving electrons from the slower motion of the atomic nuclei. The Born-Oppenheimer approximation remains a fundamental tool in quantum chemistry and molecular physics to this day. Deeper understanding of quantum principles. Born's mentorship exposed Oppenheimer to the very forefront of theoretical physics. Through intense discussions and problem-solving, Oppenheimer delved into the fundamental concepts of quantum mechanics, wave particle duality, the uncertainty principle, and quantum superposition. This deep immersion solidified his grasp of these complex and often counterintuitive ideas. Collaborative Environment Gotenjed was a hub for brilliant minds working on quantum theory, including physicists like Werner Heisenberg and Paul Dirac. The intellectually stimulating environment encouraged Oppenheimer to push his boundaries, engaging in debates and thought experiments that refined his thinking. Oppenheimer's work with Max Born not only produced tangible results like the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, but also propels him to the forefront of quantum physics. This period solidified his reputation as a brilliant theoretical physicist, laying the groundwork for his future contributions. Oppenheimer's Research and Quantum Theories after completing his doctorate at Göttingen, Oppenheimer embarked on a period of research and teaching that would further solidify his contributions to the quantum world. Oppenheimer held several prestigious postdoctoral fellowships, first at the California Institute of Technology and later at universities in Switzerland and the Netherlands. During these fellowships, he continued to explore fundamental questions in quantum mechanics and collaborated with luminaries such as Paul Dirac. In 19 
1929, Oppenheimer accepted dual professorships at the California Institute of Technology and the University of California, Berkeley. This allowed him to establish himself as a leading figure in American theoretical physics. He attracted some of the brightest young minds to study with him, forming a vibrant research group. Number one, the Oppenheimer Phillips process. In collaboration with physicist John M.C. Phillips, Oppenheimer explored the possibility of nuclear fusion, the process by which lighter atomic nuclei combine to form heavier ones, releasing tremendous energy. Their work, published in 1935, outlined a theoretical explanation for how stars might generate energy. They proposed that within a star's core, intense pressure and heat could trigger a specific type of nuclear fusion, known as the Oppenheimer Phillips process. This process involves the collision of two hydrogen nuclei, protons, to form a heavier isotope of hydrogen, deuterium, and to position the antimatter counterpart of an electron. While the details of stellar fusion have been further refined, the Oppenheimer Phillips process remains a cornerstone in our understanding of how stars function and generate the light and heat that sustain life on Earth. Number two, electron positron theory. Another key area of Oppenheimer's research involved the enigmatic world of antimatter. Following the discovery of the positron in 1932 by Carl D. Anderson, physicists scrambled to understand the behavior of this particle and its relationship to electrons. Oppenheimer made significant theoretical contributions to this field. He explored the interactions between electrons and positrons, particularly in the context of cosmic rays, high energy particles that bombard the Earth's atmosphere from space. Oppenheimer's work helped to elucidate the role of electron positron annihilation, where an electron and positron collide and disappear, releasing energy in cosmic ray phenomena. This research provided a crucial foundation for our understanding of antimatter and its role in the universe. Number three, early black hole predictions. Perhaps one of Oppenheimer's most fascinating contributions came not from his own direct research, but from his collaboration with a talented student, Hartland Snyder. In the late 1930s, they co-authored a paper that explored the behavior of massive stars under extreme gravitational conditions. Their calculations, based on the principles of a general relativity, showed that a sufficiently massive star could undergo a gravitational collapse, where its immense gravity overwhelms its internal pressure, causing it to shrink to a point of infinite density. While the term black hole wasn't used at the time, their work laid the groundwork for the theoretical prediction of these enigmatic objects that warp space-time and gobble up light itself. Oppenheimer's influence on quantum theory went beyond his specific research. His contributions ensured that the United States became a prominent center for theoretical physics research in the mid-20th century, paving the way for future breakthroughs in our understanding of the universe. Manhattan Project and World War II. The Manhattan Project stands as a pivotal moment in world history. This top-secret project, undertaken by the United States during World War II, had a single daunting goal, to build the world's first atomic bomb. The project involved a vast array of scientists and engineers working across multiple locations. Scientists needed to understand the behavior of atoms at the subatomic level to harness the immense energy stored within atomic nuclei. Oppenheimer's expertise in this field proved invaluable. The project pursued two primary paths to achieve atomic fission, the process of splitting an atomic nucleus to release tremendous energy. Gun assembly method. This approach involved rapidly firing a projectile of fissile material like uranium-235 at a stationary target of the same material, creating a critical mass and triggering an explosion. Implosion method. This method used precisely timed shaped charges to compress a sphere of fissile material, achieving critical mass and detonation. The project encompassed various locations across the United States. Sites like Los Alamos, New Mexico, housed the top theoretical physicists, including Oppenheimer, who led the project. Other facilities focused on uranium enrichment, plutonium production, and bomb component development. Oppenheimer assembled a team of brilliant physicists, many of whom who were refugees from Nazi-occupied Europe. This brain trust brought together expertise from various scientific disciplines. Oppenheimer fostered a collaborative environment where scientists tackled complex theoretical and engineering challenges. He excelled at mediating 
providing diverse viewpoints and guiding the project towards its goal. His deep understanding of quantum mechanics allowed him to guide theoretical calculations related to nuclear fission, weapon design, and the potential explosive yield of the bomb. The successful detonation of the atomic bomb in 1945 marked a turning point in history. While Oppenheimer's legacy in the Manhattan Project remains complex, his contributions to the project's scientific foundation, particularly his expertise in quantum mechanics, were undeniable. The Manhattan Project was a bittersweet success. It pushed the US to the forefront as a superpower, but its birth in the race for the atomic bomb cast a long, dangerous shadow. This intense focus on the atom also sparked the rise of quantum mechanics. This field now unlocks the potential of nuclear energy for a cleaner future and the mind-bending possibilities of quantum computing. The Manhattan Project reminds us that scientific progress is a double-edged sword, offering both the threat of destruction and the seeds of incredible human advancement. Oppenheimer's Lasting Impact Though best known for his role in nuclear physics, J. Robert Oppenheimer made important contributions to the field of quantum mechanics. The foundation of quantum computing, his collaboration with Max Born, yielded the influential Born-Oppenheimer approximation, a method that simplifies complex molecular calculations. Oppenheimer's leadership during the Manhattan Project promoted the development of talent with lasting impacts on quantum computing. He worked with notable figures like Richard Feynman, a pioneer in the field, and John von Neumann, who made contributions to both computing architecture and the theoretical measurement problem in quantum mechanics. Oppenheimer also collaborated with Isidore Rabbi, whose name is attached to the Rabbi frequency. It's an important concept in neural atom quantum computing. Oppenheimer's later opposition to further nuclear weapons development highlights the complex ethical problems in this scientific progress. But still, he was the one who set off this chain reaction. Point of no return, massive explosive force. But this time, the chain reaction doesn't stop. It will ignite the atmosphere. Despite this massive catastrophe, his perspective remains relevant to the field of quantum computing, where the technology has the potential for both positive advancements and potentially harmful applications. His stance underscores the importance of considering the ethical implications of technological breakthroughs, such as the risks of misuse and hacking or the disruption caused by achieving quantum supremacy. And that was it for today, guys. Hit like if you enjoyed our video, comment down what you want to see in our next video, and subscribe to Get Quantified. Stay tuned as we'll be back soon with another important video. Till then, keep watching Quantify.